Man, how you guys doing? Welcome to the show, baby! Oh, yeah, we about to get jiggy with it right now. Don't forget to go over to Insane Throttle Official over on Instagram. It's right there in the description box. Today, we have some news from New Zealand. My goodness gracious, what are you guys putting in the food over there? 3.5 million dollars forfeiture so far in this big bust over there they have all kinds of clubs involved in this one holy cow we're also going to go take a look over at indianapolis the club scene out there good stuff man good stuff happening over in the club scene over there in indianapolis so let's get to it Oh, yeah, baby. Yeah, we were pushed back a day on the Roku stuff. So hopefully, if you're re-watching this a couple days from now, it's going to be active. All you have to do is hit that Insane Throttle uh, TV channel app over on Roku. Watch us, man. We got a lot of good stuff going on on that channel. Some stuff that we're not able to put on YouTube. We're going to have all kinds of interviews. We're going to have all kinds of shows. It, it, the whole nine yards, man. We're going crazy hardcore biker entertainment baby hardcore let's get to our first story of today and we're going to take a look into motorcycle clubs in indianapolis rock on some good story here so this is out of wish tv.com ultra on wheels the community is big and especially when it comes to motorcycle clubs there's a lot to it let's take a look at what these families on wheels do you hear them or you see them. We have over 300 members this in just Indy 3. Their legacy is a quilt of culture. 317 stands for Indianapolis. Riders is just the name of our club, 317 Riders, and MC stands for Motorcycle Club. With different classifications, each motorcycle club takes on a persona of its own. By day, I'm Jimmy McMillan, a.k.a. Tic Tac, and by night, I guess I'm just Tac. They have structure, a boating body, a purpose, and leadership like Jimmy McMillan. 317 Riders MC is a motorcycle club founded in Indianapolis, Indiana in November of 2002, uh, focused on allowing people to come together and enjoy the sport of motorcycling. Motorcycle clubs, or what some people call MCs, have officers, pay dues, have meetings. Some even have nonprofits like the 317 Riders. So proud of the fact that we are a co-ed motorcycle club in which our women uh, ride their motorcycle just as much, if not more, than some of the men. Local MCs like the 317 Riders view the world as their roadmap. Every member of our club has a motorcycle, and we have literally traveled all over the world to as far as Africa and Rome and Greece. We literally have rode our bikes all over the world. The origin of motorcycle clubs is tied to the military. They had learned how to ride overseas and then came back, and they still love motorcycles. They came back, and one of the things that they wore was their army vest. And so over time, that's been adopted. It's kind of our armor and our shield as we wear our vests. These leather vests say a lot about the person who rides. Everybody has a different pack. Many times a club will have the city on the bottom. Some clubs will have a state on the bottom and say they claim, they claim the whole state. You'll see motorcycle clubs at bike nights like this one or doing a lot of charity work. Yeah, a lot of charity work indeed. Clubs and the biker community really steps it up for the community. Let me tell you. Uh, now, another one out of six WBRC motorcycle benefit ride held to honor teenager killed in Tuscaloosa. Sad state of affairs. Sad state of affairs. At times, we like to help people out in times like this right here. So we generally just create a ride or create some kind of fundraiser to try to raise money for the family in time, in time of need. We like to raise money, give it to the family, get all the public involved. And at the same time, it kind of sends out a message that, that we all push for and stop the violence in the city of Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Booze Fighters was there. A lot of clubs were there. It was a benefit ride to honor a 13-year-old baby who was killed in Tuscaloosa. 
My God, 13 years old. It reminds me of Chicago on the south and west side, man. Uh, Joel Smith, president of the Boogie Down uh, Motorcycle Club in uh, Cottondale. Uh, they want uh, to support uh, the Allens family during this uh, difficult time. 13 years old, my God. God. Uh, we like to help people out during times like this, so we generally just create a ride or create some kind of fundraiser to try to raise money for the family in times of need. We like to raise money, give it to the family, get the public involved. At the same time, it kind of sends out a message that we all push for, which is stop the violence in the city of Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Rock on, guys. Thanks for helping the family. Going to News 4, Douglas County motorcyclist arrested for weapons and drug charges. Uh, this out of Minden, Nevada, Jay Prater, a Douglas County resident, was arrested on Friday for possessing a firearm and controlled substance. According to the Douglas County Sheriff's Officer, he is a member of the POBOB Pissed off bastards of uh, Bloomington, outlaw motorcycle gang, and Northern Rider prison gang with a criminal history. Next, the DA out of District of Minnesota. Hells Angels member sentenced to 14 years in prison for methamphetamine trafficking. Uh, he was uh, sentenced to 168 months in prison, followed by five years of supervised release for distributing pound quantities of high-purity methamphetamine. According to the documents, between April and July of 2019, Justin Stephen Schmitz, 39, a member of the Minneapolis chapter of the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club, sold multiple pounds of high-purity methamphetamine to an undercover officer for approximately 6 G's a pound. He pled guilty in August of 14th of 2020 to one count of meth distribution. Uh, and he was also, uh, let's see here, he absconded from a treatment center and fled to Cali, where he remained a fugitive for nearly three months before being apprehended. Uh, the ATF and uh, DA and police, everybody was involved in that. Now, over in New Zealand, holy cow, our main story for today Seven arrests, $3.5 million restrained as part of a 10-month police operation. Uh, there was seven arrests uh, and that 3.5 in assets uh, as a part of that 10-month operation by police. What are you guys putting in the water over there? That's some money, man. 18 search warrants were executed uh, this week as part of Operation Chestnut. Where do they come up with these uh, deals? Um, <laughs> Matawatu organized crime unit into the sale and supply of meth and associated offending in Tasman, Wellington Central, and East Police District. Wow. The first search warrant was carried out in Wellington, uh, leading to the arrest of a 44-year-old man with links to members of the Filthy Few, Hells Angels, Black Power, and Mongrel Mob. He has been charged with 12 offenses, including possession of methamphetamine for supply, conspiracy to deal meth, unlawful possession of a firearm, unlawful possession of a restricted weapon, and money laundering. Woo! They hidden him. Uh, three Tasman men, uh, 44, 50, and 53, had been charged with drug-related offending alongside a 36-year-old man, 54, and a 53-year-old woman. I'm telling you what, man. Uh, Oz and New Zealand, man, all you guys acting like it's the 60s like it was here in the America, man. My goodness gracious over there. Doesn't help out with all that stuff that you got to fight with all this uh, bikey law stuff. Let me tell you. Wall of shame. KBTX3. A Byron police officer arrested for driving while intoxicated during a funeral possession. 
The Bryan Police Department says one of its officers resigned from her position after an on-duty DWI charge. Christian Johnson was escorting a funeral procession last month when fellow officers say she displayed signs of intoxication. News 3's Donnie Tuggle is live in the News Center tonight. So, Donnie, you learned today that she's been with the department for Damn years. Damn McDonald's! Two investigations were launched into the former officer's action. She faces a criminal investigation which is ongoing. However, the Too department's many freaking investigation whoppers. is closed because she resigned from her position. We spoke with Brian Chief, Brian Police Chief Eric Buskey, and the Texas Commission on Law Enforcement to find out what's next for Johnson. I guess he goes the melons the big and tall story. future is uncertain following her arrest <laughs> this week. The charges stem from an incident going back to school. That's what Rodney she Danger feel, by the way. While intoxicated. Officers noticed during the escort that, that there was some erratic driving by uh, Officer Johnson. They talked to their sergeants about it when they got back to the station. Uh, the sergeants interviewed her and found signs of intoxication. Johnson told her colleagues that she had been up all night consoling a friend who lost a loved one. She also reportedly mentioned being up all morning caring for her two-year-old child. Buskey is commending officers for doing the right thing. We expect all of our officers to, to do the right thing. Um, just because we're police officers. Guess that blue wall is gone. Them. We do. The Texas Commission on Law Enforcement will also conduct its own investigation. So generally speaking, uh, assuming that T. Cole has been properly notified of criminal charges, a licensee who is separated from Not a bad by cougar. their own choice or their agency's choice is placed on an enforcement hold that prevents them from working at another law enforcement agency. You know she does something with the lip. She just see the creases, the charges right? and whether Johnson is convicted will ultimately determine her future in law enforcement. For a Class B misdemeanor, it's a minimum of 60 days suspension, maximum of 10 years. A Class A misdemeanor, a minimum of 120 days suspension, maximum of 10 years. And for a felony, it's an automatic statutory revocation. Chief Buskey says resources are available for officers. Hey, they City might Brian take her in Chicago, man. Assistant they got no cops right now. Help, help with counseling for, for people with situations like alcoholism or other problems. Uh, the Bryan Police Department, we also have a peer support team. That's a group of officers that have received special... Well, interesting, interesting business right there. Uh, usually there was that big blue wall where cops would never talk against other cops. Well, it looks like that's gone right now, man. A uh, different breed here in Chicago with the Irish and Italian cops. You can never get them to break that blue wall. But it looks like it's pretty much gone nationwide. Uh, but I do say, you know, if the woman wants, she can come to Chicago. I know they probably hire her. They got cops walking off the job left and right right now. Uh, yeah, they even got the suburbs trying to cover for them because there's so many cops, uh, you know, moving on. But that was a pretty good uh, story out of Indianapolis, don't you guys think, with... How at least motorcycle clubs, some of them, are getting positive attention. You know, it's unfortunate that you'd never get that uh, with any of the one percenter clubs because the news, you know, don't don't get into that stuff. Like uh, Big Bone says, if it bleeds, it leads. <sighs> Ain't that the truth? Anyway, on Independent Riders, we will be talking about motorcycle helmets, good or bad. We have a representative of ILM Motorcycle Helmets coming aboard the panel to talk about us, showing us a couple products, all that good stuff. Also, don't forget to visit us on Instagram at official insane throttle it's a good old time over there man i'm finally getting used to that damn thing and then of course the morning hoot right after this premiere myself and china out we get down and boogieing with it man a lot of stuff happened here on insane throttle it is killing it man killing it so with that guys you uh don't forget to subscribe to this channel pass us around we don't mind pass us around man we're free <laughs> you guys have a good one i'm out you don't forget to go over to this show over on wmmr tv to download the insane throttle radio app listen to hard rock metal all that stuff 24 7. I'm outie. Talk to you later.